グローバルポップカルチャーズ。Wow. <笑> okay, I've got my laptop filled with all of my embarrassing photos. <笑> oh my god. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Classic. Oh my god. Look at the vignette. <笑><笑> What's this dust? <笑> Why? Das war, glaube ich, eins meiner ersten Selfies mit meiner alten Digitalkamera noch. Oh, that is the first selfie I think I ever took. I probably took a lot of selfies on that day. Oh my god. The eyes are wide open. Over the face, hands are beaten together in dismay or laid embarrassed in the back. There is ironic pouting, hearty laughter, indignation or horrified mouth twisting. All these gestures are reactions. Reactions to old selfies or old profile pictures that users confront themselves with in front of a running camera. On YouTube, this video idea established itself as a genre of its own in 2014 to 2016. The titles of such videos, reacting to old profile pictures or reacting to old selfies. The sequence of the videos is always the same. The YouTuber welcomes his or her followers and shows a few old profile pictures or selfies. In this situation, they pretend that they haven't seen a picture for a long time and spontaneously view them in front of the running camera. While in one area of the video, the corresponding photos of childhood and youth are faded in, the YouTuber looks at the photos in parallel on a computer, a tablet or a smartphone and comments on the pictures with facial expressions, with gestures and mostly ironic um, jokes or stories. In a picture-in-picture -picture composition or in a kind of diptych, the old and the new self, the past and present, the still and the moving image are thus juxtaposed. This picture-in-picture -picture or diptych composition is typical for the format of reaction videos, which has been very popular since the beginning of YouTube. You can watch kids on Christmas morning screaming about gifts, crowds in sports bars flipping out over touchdowns, or teenage superfans crying at long-awaited movie trailers. What the particular protagonists of the videos are watching is secondary. The focus is always on the reaction itself, which should be as surprising and intense as possible, whether because it is particularly emotional or particularly cold-hearted. Reaction videos have not yet been made the actual object of cultural studies. Therefore, I would like to start with some basic considerations about the format of reaction videos. It appears that the term reaction video refer to two different things in various Wikipedia articles, blog posts and comments on the internet. On the one hand, it refers to images, GIFs or videos that are used as reactions themselves. Um, for example, in online conversations or comments towards news on blogs. On the other hand, it refers to videos that show a person reacting to something. I will talk about the second phenomenon today, not video reactions, but reaction videos. Reaction videos are a typical, even symptomatic cultural practice for the so-called culture of digitality. In his research, the Austrian culture and media scientist Felix Stalder identified different characteristics of digital culture, of which reaction videos are the best examples. Reaction videos are referential. That means that the authors or the makers use existing cultural material for their own production. By focusing on the reaction in reaction videos, the reference even becomes the core theme itself because without existing material, there would be no reaction. The reaction is the ultimate reference. Moreover, it is not only the ultimate reference, but also the ultimate proof, because the videos serve first and foremost to witness to the effects triggered by the various cultural artifacts. Stahler also considers communality, communality to be characteristic of the culture of digitality. As an established social media format, reaction videos are not only used for entertainment, but above all for identification, networking and interaction. 
Reaction videos generate empathy with the person being portrayed because they are essentially about emotions, which are also expressed through mostly expressive facial expressions. They activate the so-called mirror neurons that let us view us laugh along, cry along, sympathize, repeat the portrait gesture and thus leads unavoidably to identification with the person reacting. This form of identification with other people is very important for communality, um, especially on the internet. Beyond that, reaction videos something have what I call a kickoff quality. They encourage comments in which one meets the emotions with approval or with rejection. But they also encourage imitation, provide content ideas for others and thus relieve them of a certain pressure to be creative, which unavoidably arises when you regularly produce or have to produce videos for followers if, um, if you want to keep them in line. But what people accept from reaction videos, precisely because they show emotions, is that they are authentic, that they are real and not fake or artificial. It is interesting that this authenticity can only be achieved through an artificial look, so the natural is expressed precisely through exaggeration and almost overstated expressivity of facial expression and gestures. This is by no means self-evident. A natural mode of expression is generally associated with a much more reserved facial expression and gesture. For example, in paintings of the 19th century, figures or groups of figures are portrayed that react to classical music. In such paintings, authenticity is produced through discrete restraint, through the representation of a quiet and thoughtful contemplation. In Vladimir Yegorovich Makovsky's On the Gramophone from 1910, for example, one can see how the lady in the house plays music to her children, her mother, uh, and to the domestic servant on the gramophone. It is striking how each person is completely absurd. There is no interaction, no facial expression or gesture addressed to the others or even to the viewer. Markovsky wanted to show an intimate scene, which is why he allows the action to take place in a private room and in closed company. The persons are among themselves. The most performative of all is the lady in the house who actively plays the music to the others and who observes the reaction of the audience with a certain curiosity. In that sense, paintings like these I call reaction paintings equally to the videos we see nowadays. Reaction videos are not about capturing an intimate, private and in this sense natural moment which um, may have been Markovsky's intention. Reaction videos are specifically addressed to the digital public who are supposed to feel entertained, inspired and animated by the expressiveness. Not always, but mostly, reaction videos are self-portraits. The YouTubers show themselves while reacting. In this context, expressions and exaggeration are natural by being performed ironically, like an extreme dark face um, or other, at first glance, unnatural selfie poses. The protagonists are perceived as authentic because they do not take themselves too seriously. They reflect the scene in its absurdity. Reaction videos are mostly not beautifying self-presentations, no smooth, unapproachable selfies, but so-called selfies of the soul. In reaction videos, the YouTubers can present themselves as funny, as ironic, as casual, as cool people who are not embarrassed to stick out their tongue and thus question the whole video in its meaningfulness. Within the reaction video genre, it has become a real challenge to create particularly unusual, surprising, absurd, crazy constellations. There are teenagers who react to their parents' Google search history. Um, there are hospital workers who react to thank you videos in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, there are YouTube, uh, YouTube couples who react to relationship goals um, on the internet. Uh, there are boomers who react to food trends of millennials, Pakistanis who taste and react to American burgers for the first time, or Italian grandmothers who eat frozen pizza for the first time, and many more. There are whole profiles that are dedicated exclusively to the format of reaction videos, 
and produce these unusual constellations specifically for this purpose. Some YouTubers even specialize in specific reaction videos, for example, um, and that's the most popular, uh, reactions to games like Gronk, but also nudes or memes. Within this variety, there is still some classification. Two basic forms of reaction videos can be distinguished. One are videos in which the amateurish reaction to something previously unknown or little known is in the focus. For example, children um, reacting to technical devices used before their lifetime, such as the Walkman. Many of these videos show the first time um, the innocent eye that is not clouded by the disadvantages of history, that sees not only what it already known. These videos appeal to the old desire for pure eye, which is free of previous knowledge and judgments. Visual artists in particular have always seen a special quality in the immediate reaction and innocent gaze. In this context, an interesting reaction video from the pre-internet era is Herz Frank's 10 minutes older from 1978. 10 Minutes Older is a documentary which is considered part of the well-known Riga School of Poetic Documentary. The director Herz Frank is known for his daring cinematic experiments that aimed to examine the human psyche. In his film we literally watch a group of children growing 10 minutes older. As the audience we watch a handful of children who in turn watch a puppet show. We don't see what the children are watching. We watch the children watching. The children, obviously unaware of our presence, watch the show uninhibited and react animatedly to what is happening in front of them. Um, a range of emotions is captured. Joy, fear, sadness and many shades of each. Comparable to this work is um, maybe the photo series a Movie Audience by Jeff Wall, which was taken one year later in 1979. In both cases, what the people on the movie or pictures look at remains invisible for the viewer of the movie or pictures. Their reactions become part of an experiment. They are exhibited. That is different to reaction videos on the internet. These always show the object to which people react. The persons do not only invite the viewer to observe their reaction, but rather to react collectively. The experience should be shared. While Frank and Wall aimed at capturing real life and presenting it artistically, reaction videos in the social web are part of the real life. The videos do not stand alone. The viewers of the videos experience something together with the protagonists about which they exchange later in a commentary area. But there is another type of reaction videos. This type does not show amateurish but professional reactions. In this case, the protagonists confront themselves with something they are very familiar with. This can be uh, professional dancers watching and reacting to TikTok choreographies or doctors reacting to medical film scenes. All through, these reactions can be spontaneous um, or even first-time reactions. They are never innocent or free. The supposed spontaneity is rather a means to an end. It allows the performers to demonstrate their talent for improvisation. This is what makes all reaction videos comparable. They show improvisations in front of a running camera. They are not planned productions, but um, are created, of course, in the knowledge that one is performing for an audience. Improvisations require certain skills to be able to act virtuously and spontaneously. To be able to act virtuously like that allows to produce films inexpensive, um, fast and without a script, which is why they are especially well suited for YouTube. As an improvisational format, reaction recordings have been very popular since the beginning of television. Just think of the American reality TV show Candid Camera, which has been broadcasted since 1948. In the show, just one example, a secretary reacts to um, a love letter dictated by Woody Allen in the 1960s, um, or women are filmed reacting to a broken typewriter. 
Until today, reaction formats are extremely popular on television. The German film scholar Michaela Grützen even has described the VMAs, the Video Music Awards, as a great reaction video. Never only the event on stage is shown, but always the reactions of the audience. The amazed Will Smith with his family or the chattering Taylor Swift. Of course, there are videos on YouTube in which someone reacts to the celebrity reactions on the VMAs. While an event on stage and the reaction of the audience are usually shown one after another on German or American television, the picture-in-picture -picture aesthetics of contemporary YouTube reaction videos has its tradition rather in Japanese television. Here you can see um, an excerpt from the TV show Bakusho with several respondents. For a long time it was smiled um, at this so-called face-in-the-box format, the so-called waipu. It was seen as a curiosity from Japanese television. In fact, this format is well known in German television as well, even without a comparable masterful fusion of graphic and photographic elements. Um, here you can see an excerpt from the German television show Nur die Liebe zählt. In the second subgenre I was referring to earlier, um, the reaction to old profile pictures, the format sometimes does look very similar to the Vaipu, but sometimes it looks more like a diptych. The juxtaposition of two pictures of the same person, one from the past next to one from the present, invites a direct comparison. Here the form matches the content because when looking at old pictures of oneself it is always about a comparison with the person one has become in the meantime. Also one of the most popular German beauty bloggers Bianca Heinegger who publishes her videos under a profile called uh, Baby's Beauty Palace has recorded and shared her reactions to former selfies with the community. The title is Meine peinlichsten Teenie Fotos, my most embarrassing teen photos. Embarrassing uh, written in capital letters. This feeling of embarrassment is the subject of many videos in the subgenre. The great challenge of YouTubers is to express this embarrassment all through. Showing pictures that are supposed to be embarrassing itself is actually not an embarrassing but a cool gesture. The photos are an occasion to express this kind of embarrassment through demonstrative words, facial expressions and gestures. To exhibit this embarrassment works as an immunization. Like an exaggerated duck face, the exaggerated articulation of shame works as a protection against real criticism by the viewers, by simply anticipating it. Nevertheless, um, Bibi still feels the need to justify her video. She wants to show the pictures, um, I quote her, so that we can laugh out loud together. Next to teenager photos or selfies, she also shows a baby photo of herself. Um, this is to be understood, I think, as an invitation, an invitation to the common good old slight presentation of long gone days. Some may remember how in a darkened room people were telling stories and alongside there were pictures of their everyday life, of their journeys or celebrations. In Bibi's room, on the contrary, nothing is dark. Everything is radiant. The beauty, the beauty blogger's well-lit skin, the white tablet on her lap, the bright wall in the background. Bibi is a digital native. Her pictures never were hidden in the dark of a shoebox or under the cover of a photo album. These pictures always were glowing either on the display of early digital cameras, smartphones or computer screens. These pictures may even have always remained digital, never been printed. In just a few years, the digital natives have witnessed such great technological developments that they may already consider themselves as historical figures. Bibi permanently addresses their distance from the old pictures. Most of them are selfies. A crazy mirror flash selfie, um, a stone age cell phone, early facial distortions, duck faces, um, the perspectives are dizzying and so on. Nevertheless, 
I quote her, at least my old embarrassing selfies have a purpose now, haha. <laughs> Bibi's happy, her video is recycling. At another point, she shouts uh, with indignation, I quote her, I thought I had deleted it. Of course, this meant rhetorically, but it still makes it clear which pictures are being viewed here. Pictures that originally did not serve the purpose of memory. Images that could have been deleted. Pictures that were once sent to friends or family members, but were then allowed to fall into oblivion. The art historian Wolfgang Ulrich suggested that selfies are less comparable with self-portraits, but rather with emoticons and emojis. The use of emoticons and emojis, and thus selfies, would be considered as a modern and global visual language. This is also evident on YouTube when, when Bibi and others look at their own selfies and discuss what kind of profile pictures were up to date in the early 2000s and which platforms were relevant at that time, such as knuddels.de, ubot.com and myspace.com. In doing so, they reconstruct the context of the image that is not visible in itself. This strange context is one reason why bloggers can't identify with the image, which is, however, exactly why none of these photos are actually embarrassing for them. Roland Barthes, Es ist so gewesen, It's been like this, has completely shifted from the experience to the context. It is no longer inherent in the photographs themselves. The selfie biographies are actually social media biographies. That's why the YouTubers don't try to close the gap between the former and the current identity. They tell off their personal social media socialization because the photos themselves can at best be used to draw conclusions about moments in the history of technology um, or a selfie-specific posing and not about an adventure or something like that. In this kind of YouTube videos, the understanding of how our current media works is more developed than it is often assumed. Bloggers are obviously very aware um, of the contexts in which the various images have been effective and what functions they are fulfilling. This is also the case in Bibi's YouTube clip about her old teen photos. It is primarily intended to inspire people to participate. She asks her viewers at the end of the video, I quote her, what about you? Do you have buried embarrassing selfies and such? So in a nutshell, if you show your own and not others reactions, the video serves as a kind of selfie and at the same time as a selfie of the soul. In the positive sense, you show yourself as a person who is free of inhibitions, as a person who can love at yourself. That's why it is so important, at least, to show embarrassing rather than beautiful photos. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed the embarrassing photos of me. Ich fand es wirklich sehr lustig, aber es ist auch wirklich unfassbar peinlich für mich. I have made an absolute idiot of myself. Let me know, what is your worst profile picture that you have ever used? Tell me what's the most embarrassing photo that you have on your Facebook. Question of the week, what is your favorite selfie pose? Like, is it the front cam selfie or is it like the mirror selfie? Like bathroom selfie, like all that shit. I want to know, leave a comment down below.